Hi, today we're going to be learning about multiplying algebraic expressions, focusing on multiplying monomials by polynomials. And just sort of by reminding you about the distributive property of multiplication. When we multiply the sum or difference of two numbers by a third number, it's the same as multiplying each of the two numbers by the third number separately and then adding the answer. So let's have a look at an example of this. So if I've got 5 times 3 plus 7, if you look at 3 plus 7, that gives you 10. So 5 times 10 is 50. So this gives us 50 on this side over here. Now if we look on this side, we have 5 times 3. So I'm multiplying the 5 by the first term. And 5 times 7, I'm multiplying by the second one as well separately. So 5 times 3 is 15 plus 5 times 7, which is 35. 15 plus 35 is also 50. So both of these give me the same result, whether I multiply by the whole thing, where I, once I've already added it, or if I multiply by each of the parts that I'm adding separately, I will get the same result because of the distributive property of multiplication. But now the reality is most of the time with normal numbers, you won't have to do this because you can add the 3 and the 7 and you can multiply the 5 by 10. But we do need to be able to do this when we are working with algebra. Like in this example over here, I can't add the y and the z because they are not like terms. And so I need to have a different way of multiplying this to simplify it and get rid of the brackets. So that's why we need to learn how to use the distributive property of multiplication so that we can simplify expressions like this. Okay, so let's have a look at how we would use the distributive property in simplifying an algebraic expression. So if you're given an algebraic expression like this, what this means over here is x times y plus z. Now, when you're going to work this out or simplify it, you're going to multiply the x by the y, and that will give you xy. And then you'll multiply the x by the z as well, and that will give you xz. And you're going to add them because the z was positive. So it was a positive times a positive, giving you positive xz. So that's how we're going to use the distributive property of multiplication to simplify algebraic expressions like this. Okay, so let's have a look at our first example for today. In this example, we've got negative 5x squared multiplied by, in brackets, x squared plus 6x minus 8. So let's have a look at how we would do this question. Okay, so I'm going to start off by multiplying the negative 5x squared by the first term in the brackets. Remember, we're going to multiply by each of the terms. So the first one is that x squared. So I'm going to multiply negative 5x squared by x squared. And that gives me negative, because it's negative times positive, 5. And then x squared times x squared is x to the power of 4. Remember, we're using the laws of exponents. So when you multiply powers on the same base, you add the exponents and the base stays the same. Okay, so that's the first term in the brackets done. Now we're going to multiply by the next term in the brackets. So it's negative 5x squared multiplied by positive 6x. So it's a negative times a positive is negative. 5 times 6 is 30. And then x squared times x is x to the power of 2 plus 1 is 3. Okay? And then the last one is going to be negative 5x squared times negative 8. So it's going to be a negative times a negative, which is positive. 5 times 8 is 40. And then x squared. So that's what we would get for that question. All right, let's go on to our next example. So in this example, we've got negative, and then in brackets, 6a squared minus 4ab plus 7b squared. Okay, so let's have a look at how we would do this question as well. Okay, so now the first thing you need to remember when you get a question like this, when you've just got a minus sign in front of your brackets, it's actually not just minus, it's negative 1 in front of the brackets. So over here, I'm going to put a 1 over here, so that's going to be negative 1. You don't need to write the 1, but you need to remember that it is there. So it's negative 1 that I'm multiplying in. So the first term I'm going to be multiplying by negative 1. So it's going to be negative 1 times 6x squared is negative, because it's a negative times a positive, it's negative. But then, when you multiply anything by 1, it stays the same. So I'm multiplying the 6x squared by 1, that gives me 6a squared. So what happened is the 6a squared changed from positive to negative because I multiplied it by negative 1. Now let's have a look at the next term. When we multiply negative 1 by the next term, negative 4ab, it's going to be a negative times a negative is a positive, and then 1 times 4ab stays 4ab. Okay, and then the last term, we have negative 1 times 7b squared, positive 7b squared. So again, it's a negative times a positive, that's a negative. And then 1 times 7b squared stays 7b squared. So when you have a negative in front of your bracket like this, remember it means negative 1. 
You don't have to actually write the 1, but you need to remember that. And basically, when you're going to multiply it out, what actually ends up happening is every term inside the brackets is going to change sign because you're multiplying all the terms by negative 1. Now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to do for yourself. Here's the first one you're going to do. You've got negative a multiplied by a minus 7. I'm going to give you 30 seconds for this question. Okay, so let's go through that question and see what you should have got. Right, so over here I've got negative a multiplied by a minus 7. So we're going to multiply the negative a by the a first. So it's a negative times a positive is negative. So that's negative. a times a is a squared. And then I'm going to multiply the negative a by negative 7. So it's a negative times a positive is positive. So it's plus and then 7a. So that we should have got for question A. Right, now we're going to go on to question B. Here you've got 2x cubed multiplied by 3x squared plus 4x minus 1. I'm going to give you 30 seconds for this one as well. Okay, so let's go through that question and see what you should have got. So the first thing we're going to do here is multiply the 2x cubed by the 3x squared. And that gives us 2 times 3, which is 6. And then x cubed times x squared is x to the power of 3 plus 2, which is 5. Okay, then we have to multiply our 2x cubed by the 4x. So that's 2 times positive 4 is positive 8. And then x cubed times x is x to the power of 3 plus 1, which is 4. And then finally, we have 2x cubed times negative 1. That gives us a positive times a negative is negative. And then the 2x cubed times 1 stays 2x cubed. Okay, so that you should have got for question B. Right, now we're going to go on to question C. Okay, here you've got negative, and then in brackets, 3a squared plus 6ab minus 4b squared. Let's give you 30 seconds for this question as well. Okay, so let's go through that and see what you should have got. Right, so first of all, you have to remember that this negative isn't just negative, it is negative 1. Okay, now remember, you don't have to write that 1 over there, but if it helps you, you can. So it's negative 1 that I'm multiplying into the bracket. So first, I'm going to multiply negative 1 by the 3a squared, and that gives me negative 3a squared. Then I'm going to multiply the negative 1 by the 6ab, which is positive 6ab, and that gives me negative 6ab. And then I'm going to finally multiply the negative 1 by the negative 4b squared, and that gives me positive 4b squared. Remember, when you have a negative outside, all the signs inside are going to end up changing. Okay, right, so let's go on to the next one. Here for question D, you've got a half x multiplied by 4x squared plus 2x minus 3 in brackets. So I'm going to give you one minute for this question.
Okay, let's go through that question and see how it went. So I've got half x multiplied by 4x squared. That's the first thing I need to work out. So now we have a fraction involved in this one. So we're going to multiply the half by 4. Now remember, multiplication, you can also think of as of. So half of 4 is the same as half times 4. So half of 4 is 2. So that's going to be 2. And then x times x squared is x cubed. If you want to think of it as the actual calculation, you can do it like this. So that's going to be half times and then remember 4 is the same as 4 over 1 and then you can cancel out your 2 and your 4 leaving you 1 and 2 over there so that gives us 1 times 2 which is 2 over 1 times 1 which is 1 so it's 2 over 1 which is how we get this 2 over here okay so that's 2x cubed then we're going to go and multiply the half x by the next term which is 2x so that's a positive times a positive is plus and then half of 2 is 1. And because we're going to have the 1 in front of the x times x, which is x squared, we don't need to write it. So it's half of 2, which is 1, and then x squared. Now, you, again, you can work that out like this over here. We can say half times 2 over 1, which is the same as 2. And then that, again, it cancels out. 2 goes in there once, 2 goes in there once, leaving us with 1 over 1. So that's how we get the 1 over there in front of the x squared. And then half x times negative 3 for our last one over here. And to multiply that in, we've got a positive times a negative is a negative. And then now we've got 3 over 1 that we're multiplying by the half. So I have a half times 3 over 1. Now this time nothing is going to cancel. So that gives me 3 over 2. So that's going to be 3 over 2x. So that's what we should have got for that question. Okay, now we're going to go on to the next one, question E. So for this question, you've got negative 3a b squared c cubed multiplied by, in brackets, 2a squared b c squared minus 6a cubed b squared c plus 5b c squared. I'm going to give you one minute for this question as well. Okay, so let's go through that question and see what you should have got. So the first thing we're going to multiply here is our negative 3ab squared c cubed by the 2a squared b c squared. Okay, so first I've got negative times positive. That gives me a negative. Then 3 times 2 is 6. a times a squared is a cubed. b squared times b is b cubed. And c cubed times c squared is c to the power of 5. So that's what you should have got when you multiply the first term. Now we're going to go and multiply by the second term in the brackets. So I've got negative 3ab squared c cubed multiplied by negative 6a cubed b squared c. So it's a negative times a negative is a positive. Then 3 times 6 is 18. a times a cubed is a to the power of 4. b squared times b squared is b to the power of 4. And c cubed times c is c to the power of 4. Okay, and then we're going to multiply by our last term. So that's going to be multiplying by 5bc squared. So first, a negative times a positive is negative. Then 3 times 5 is 15. a times no a's over there, so it's just a. Then b squared times b is b cubed. And c cubed times c squared is c to the power of 5. So that's what we should have got for that question. Okay, now let's go on to our next example. In this example, there's a little bit more going on. Okay, we've got x squared 
times 3x squared plus 2x minus 4 in brackets. Then we've got minus another set of brackets with 2x cubed plus 3x squared inside. And then plus 2x cubed multiplied by 5x minus 6 in another set of brackets. Okay, so let's go and have a look at how we would do this question. So first of all, I need to see what all is going on here. I have actually got more than one term in this question. Okay, all the ones we've done up until this point, we've only had one term. Now we've got more than one term. So we need to simplify each term and then we can go and see if we can add and subtract anything. Okay, so I've got over here, x squared multiplied by the brackets. That's my first term. My second term is from the minus and then those brackets over there. And my third term, my last term is the 2x cubed and the last set of brackets over there. Okay, so the first term, I need to go and simplify by multiplying out these brackets. So I'm going to have x squared times 3x squared. That gives me 3x to the power of 4. Then I have x squared times 2x over there. That is 2, so it's plus 2, and then x times x squared is x cubed. And then I've got x squared times negative 4, so that's going to be positive times negative is negative, 4x squared. So that's what you should get for multiplying out your first term over there, your first set of brackets. Now we're going to go on to the second term. We've got a negative, and then we've got our brackets over here. Now remember, this negative means negative 1, okay? So I'm multiplying negative 1 into my brackets over here, so it's going to become negative 1 times 2x cubed is negative 2x cubed. Then negative 1 times 3x squared is negative 3x squared. And then we have over here 2x cubed times 5x. That's positive times positive is positive. 2 times 5 is 10. And x cubed times x is x to the power of 4. And then finally we have over here 2x cubed times negative 6. That gives us positive times negative is negative. 2 times 6 is 12. And x cubed stays x cubed. Okay, so that's what I get after I do all my multiplication. Now we're not done. We need to now go and check and see if there are any like terms that we can simplify. So I need to go and find all of my like terms. So over here, I've got x to the power of 4. Let's see if there are any other x to the power of 4s. I've got no, 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 no. Here's an x to the power of 4. So it's plus 10x to the power of 4. And then that's not. Okay, then we've also got x cubed, so it's plus 2x cubed, here's minus 2x cubed, and here's minus 12x cubed, so those are like terms. And then I've got over here the minus 4x squared and the minus 3x squared. Okay, so now let's go and simplify those like terms and combine them. So 3x to the power of 4 plus 10x to the power of 4 is 13x to the power of 4. Now we're going to go on to our x cubed. So I've got 2x cubed minus 2x cubed. Now those are going to cancel each other out because they're the same, just positive and negative. Okay, so then I'm left over here with a minus 12x cubed. And then I've got minus 4x squared minus 3x squared. That's negative 7x squared. So that's what you should get for that question. Right, now we're going to go on to a few that you're going to do for yourself. Right, here's the first one. You've got 2x times 3x minus 5 in brackets plus x times 4x plus 2 in brackets. I'm going to give you one minute for this question.
Okay, so let's go through that and see what you should have got. So first we need to identify where our terms are. So our first term is this over here, the 2x and then the first set of brackets. And the second term is the plus x and the next set of brackets. Okay, so I need to multiply out my first term over here to get rid of these brackets. So I've got 2x times 3x. That gives me 6x squared. Then I have over here 2x times negative 5. That gives me negative 10x. Then I need to go and simplify my next term. So I've got x times 4x over there. That is plus 4x squared. And then I've got x times 2, which gives me plus 2x. Okay, so that's what you've got when you did all the multiplication. Now you need to go and see if there's anything that you can simplify further by collecting your like terms and combining them. So I've got 6x squared and I've got 4x squared. Those are like terms. And I've got over here minus 10x and plus 2x. Those are also like terms. Okay, so first my 6x squared and my 4x squared. 6x squared plus 4x squared gives me 10x squared. And then negative 10x plus 2x is negative 8x. So that's what you have got for question A. Right, let's go on to question B. You've got 4x multiplied by 3x squared minus 2x plus 5 in brackets, and then minus 5x squared plus 4x minus 8 also in brackets. Okay, so I'm going to give you one minute for this question as well. Okay, so let's go through that question and see what you should have got. Right, so we're going to start off by identifying where our terms are. We've got 4x and then the first set of brackets, that's our first term, and then the minus and our, se our second set of brackets, and that's the second term over there. Okay, so now I'm going to go and multiply the 4x into that first set of brackets, and when I multiply, I'm going to be multiplying the 4x by the 3x squared. That gives me 12x cubed, then the 4x times the negative 2x is negative 8x squared. And then 4x times positive 5 is plus 20x. Okay, so that's our first term multiplied out. Now we're going to go on to the second term. So for the second term, I'm multiplying negative 1 into the bracket. So I've got negative 1 times 5x squared is negative 5x squared. Negative 1 times 4x is negative 4x, and negative 1 times negative 8 is positive 8. Now remember, when you have a negative in front of the brackets, all of the signs are just going to change inside the brackets. Okay, now we're going to go and see if there are any like terms that we can collect. So I've got over here 12x cubed, and I don't have any other x cubed, so I don't have any like terms for that. Then I've got negative 8x squared, and I've also got negative 5x squared over there. Then I've got over here plus 20x and minus 4x. And then over here I've got plus 8, which is on its own as well. Right, so let's go and simplify each of those by collecting and, co and combining our like terms. So the 12x cubed, there weren't any like terms, so it's going to stay as it is. Then minus 8x squared, minus 5x squared gives me negative 13x squared. Then I've got plus 20x minus 4x, that's plus 16x. And then I've got my plus 8 at the end of here. Okay, and that's what we should have got for question B. Now we're going to go on to question C. In question C, you've got 6a multiplied by 2a minus 4 in brackets. 
and then plus 5 multiplied by a squared plus 2a minus 4 in brackets to give you one minute for this question as well. Okay, so let's go through that and see what you should have got. Okay, so first I need to identify where my terms are. So my first term is the 6a and the first set of brackets, and the second term is the plus 5 and the second set of brackets over there. Okay, so for the first term, I'm going to be multiplying first the 6a by the 2a. Okay, so I've got 6 times 2 is 12, and a times a is a squared. Then I'm going to be multiplying the 6a by the minus 4. So it's a positive times a negative is negative. 6 times 4 is 24, and then a. Then I'm going to go on to my second term. So now I'm multiplying the 5 into the bracket. So I've got 5 times a squared. So it's going to be plus 5a squared. Then 5 times 2a. That gives me plus 10a. And then 5 times negative 4 is minus 20. So that's what you should have got when you did your multiplication. Now we're going to go and collect and combine our like terms. So first of all, I've got this 12a squared, and I've got also 5a squared. Those are like terms. Then I've got the minus 24a and the plus 10a. Those are like terms. And then I've got my minus 20, and there are no like terms that go with that. Okay, so now I'm going to go and simplify this. So we've got 12a squared plus 5a squared. That gives me 17a squared. Minus 24a plus 10a is minus 14a, and then the minus 20 on the end. Okay, so that's what you should have got for question C. Now we're going to go on to the last question for today. Question D. We've got 4x squared multiplied by 5x cubed plus 2x minus 1 in brackets, minus 3 times 6x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4x in brackets, and then minus 7x to the power of 5 plus 8x cubed in brackets. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes for this question.
Okay, so let's go through that and see what you should have got. Right, so we're going to start off by identifying where our terms are. So our first term is the 4x squared and that first set of brackets. The second term is the negative 3 and the second set of brackets. And then the last term is a minus and that last set of brackets over there. Okay, so in my first term, I'm multiplying the 4x squared by the 5x cubed first. So 4 times 5 is 20. And then x squared times x cubed is x to the power of 5. Then 4x squared times 2x is plus 8. X, time, x squared times x is x cubed. And then 4x squared times negative 1 gives us negative 4x squared. So that's what you should have got when you multiplied out that first term. Then the second term, we've got over here negative 3 that we're multiplying into the bracket. So it's negative 3 times 6x cubed. That's minus 18x cubed. Then negative 3 times the next term, which is 3x squared. That gives us negative 9x squared. And then negative 3 times 4x. That gives us negative 12x. And then the last term, we are just multiplying the negative 1 in. So it's negative 1 times 7x to the power of 5 is negative 7x to the power of 5. And then negative 1 times 8x to the power of 3 is negative 8x cubed. So that's what you should have got when you multiplied everything out. Now we need to go and find our like terms. So over here, I've got 20x to the power of 5. And I've got over here a minus 7x to the power of 5. Then I've got 8x cubed. Then I've got a minus 18x cubed and a minus 8x cubed over there. And then over here I've got minus 4x squared. And then I've got over here minus 9x squared. Then I've also got a minus 12x over there. Okay, so now let's go and simplify this and combine our like terms. So 20x to the power of 5 minus 7x to the power of 5. That's 13x to the power of 5. Okay, now we're going to go on to our x to the power of 3s. So I've got 8x cubed, minus 18x cubed, and minus 8x cubed. These two over here, the 8x cubed and the minus 8x cubed, they cancel each other out because they're the same, except they're plus and minus. And then that leaves me with just this minus 18x cubed. Then I've got my squared, my x squared. So I've got minus 4x squared, minus 9x squared. That gives me negative. 13x squared, and then I end off with my minus 12x on its own. Okay, and that's what you should have got for that question. And that's how we multiply monomials by polynomials in algebraic expressions. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.